What's going on, family? Hey, let me say to you, I'm certain that you've heard it already, but on the behalf of Ashley and I, happy New Year. I'm hoping that as you've stepped into 2022, you've done so with excitement, joy, exceeding expectation. I don't know if you remember, but in November, we talked about the expectation equation. I'm telling you right now, I want you to get your spiritual fishing rod out and get ready to wait and watch God do something amazing in your life this year. This is going to be a year where I believe God is going to show up in your life, and I'm praying and in covenant with you that it's going to be a special time for you and yours. And I'm looking forward to this word today because I believe that it's going to set a course. It's going to be a spiritual GPS, for lack of better words, for where God is taking each and every one of us this year. And I know that this is a little tricky sometimes. I want you to hear my heart very clear because there's some specific and different destinations that God may be taking all of us to. But there is a shared direction that all believers should be moving to. I want you to hear me say that again, that there may be specific goals and different aspirations and even different ways in which God might be moving you to operate in this year. That is called being an individual and walking out your personal faith journey with God. But I do believe that in the midst of all of that, there is a shared direction that all believers can head on. I want you to make sure you take out your notepad. I want you to be a note taker this year. I want you to make sure whether you journal, whether you put it in your phone, please, please, please walk with me through this conversation today because I believe that it's going to be a game changer for your 2022. Are you ready? I can't hear you. Come on, put it in chat. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, let's jump into it. Uh, I'm going to just jump in there and tell you my sermon title right from the beginning. Right from the beginning, I want you to hear this. Write it down. Put it in big font. Capitalize it. Put it in all caps. And this is what it is. This is my year. Dot, dot, dot. I promise. (laughs) So I'm going to say it again. Our sermon title for today is this is my year. Dot, dot, dot. I promise promise. Now, for all of us, I just want to take this moment to say there are two types of people probably watching this right now. There are two types of people, and and I want you to self-identify. Be honest with yourself, all right? Don't lie to yourself. Sometimes the person we lie to the most is ourselves, but I want you to self-identify which person you may be. Some of us are going to pick up our phone this year. Uh, Maybe we're going to text somebody what we believe that God is about to do or what we are personally pursuing. Maybe you've already had a conversation like this, but there are dreamers and there are realists. There are dreamers and there are realists. A dreamer has already said, this is my year. And some of you are realists and you told people you said that last year. For some of us, if you're a dreamer, if you're a dreamer, I'm talking to my dreamers, you say something like, you know, this is what we love to say in church. You got to see it before you see it. And then you got some people who are realists who says, I'll believe it when I see it. I got some dreamers I know who are watching this right now who are caught up in the wow effect of what this year can be. And then I know I got some realists watching this right now who are caught up in the how effect of this year. Ah, that sounds good, but how are we going to do that? That sounds good, but where the money coming from for, from for that? I, I know that's what y'all said, but I don't know how that's going to show up. And in the midst of this tension that we all experience, I need you to understand that both dreamers and realists sometimes have a point. Can I just make a funny note? A lot of times if you're a dreamer, you marry a realist. (laughs) And if you're a realist, you marry a dreamer. That's another sermon for another day. But some of y'all don't hit nobody, don't nudge nobody too hard. But you may be married to the opposite, and hopefully today helps you out as well. The reality of it is dreamers and realists show up in all of our lives. And as we begin a new year, I want to lead us toward an idea, a question that I think both sides can agree on. Yes, that's right. I believe that we can bring peace at the beginning of 2022 to both dreamers and realists, even if it's just for a little bit. And here it is. I want you to lean into this one word, and that's the word possibility. At the core of a start to a new year is possibility. And here's a big idea that I want you to be thinking about today. I'm going to give you a couple, but I want you to wrestle with this one. Possibility fuels the potential for a better future. Possibility fuels the potential for a better future. To the realist, possibility helps you avoid becoming a pessimist. 
It helps you avoid this idea that nothing can happen and that's never happened. And all the things that show up, all the facts and all the information and all the articles and all the receipts that you've pulled up. I know that all of it even may be legitimate at times. But when you wrestle with the idea that a new year brings about new possibility, it gives you the opportunity if you are a realist to say, maybe, just maybe, I can avoid pessimism. If you're a dreamer, possibility helps you to avoid never taking action. Some of us, if we're dreamers, we can be honest. It, the, the, the truth is we said some things that, that last year and the year before last that we just never acted on. We said we were going to do some things that the pandemic really didn't stop. Our just lack of pursuit did. We, we said we were going to do some things and, and we just didn't show up. We didn't do it. Why? Why didn't we do it? We didn't do it because we just got tired or lazy or convenience robbed us of the courage to move forward. And when you wrestle with the idea of possibility at the start of the year, I pray to God that possibility moves you from thought to action. I pray that possibility doesn't allow you to sit in your comfort and convenience, but it moves you into a place of courage and activity. I pray that you believe in the possibility that is in front of you this year. Now, here's the big thing I want you to understand. If you don't think it's possible, you're correct. And if you do think it's possible, you're correct. <laughs> Let me say it again. There are some things that some of you don't think are possible, and you would be right. And there's some things that some of you do think is possible, and you would also be right. Because at the core of our lives is our belief about what is possible. It's our belief about what could happen. It's our belief. And when you don't believe something can happen, let me tell you something. It's never going to happen. When you do believe something can happen, I believe God can blow your mind. As we begin to think about this year and as we begin to think about the idea of possibility, I begin to think about all those people who made things possible in the world. I was watching on Facebook the other day, and maybe you're like me over these holidays. I took some time to give myself permission to be a little lazy, and so I scrolled a little more than usual. Yeah, I know some of y'all might say, I was double tapping, and I was watching, and you know how Facebook gets you now. You know, you watch one clip, and then it jumps to the next clip, and it jumps to the next clip, and it jumps to the next clip, and I was watching Steve Harvey on one clip. Oh, man, this some of y'all might have seen some of these, and, and there was this clip of him with his studio audience talking about his story and his journey as he he became a, a star in this media industry. And he was telling the story when he was broke and he was on his last dollar and his last dime trying to become a comedian. And he was sharing this story and you know how they did it. They scored it with just the right music at just the right pace. They cut to some powerful imagery of people struggling and, and you know, and everybody was emotional and you had this moment where you was like, I'm gonna hold it together. I ain't about to be crying now for no reason. But, but we were listening to Steve Harvey tell this story to his studio audience about how he was at his last diamond dollar. And then he got a call from the Apollo. But here's what the challenge was. He had to get to Apollo in a short time frame, and he didn't have all the money to get there. But just then, as he was crying and praying and about to give up, he got a call from somebody who said, hey, can you get to Florida and come and do a show? And the amount of money he needed to get from Florida to New York was just the right amount. And so he starts to tell this story and piece together the parts about how his life went from pessimism to possibility, how in a moment where he was about to give up, he found the courage to keep going, how in this moment where it seemed like all the things he had dreamed were never going to be realistic. God made a way. And by the end of his story, there wasn't a dry eye in the studio. It wasn't even a dry eye on our couch, but that's another story for another day. And all of these things are happening, and all of it points back to the idea of possibility. Now, Steve Harvey is just one example of the many stories we all know of people who just seem like they've lived a life that was impossible. How did that happen for them? And it didn't happen for me. And I'm not saying that everybody is meant to be at the Apollo or meant to be on TV. I'm not saying that every dream that you carry is public. Some of you have private dreams, dreams for what you want to leave your family, dreams for what you want to experience personally. I just want you to wrestle with this idea today that at the beginning of every year, possibility is at your doorstep. Possibility is on your lap. Possibility is in your home. Possibility is in your marriage. Possibility is in your health. Possibility exists. 
If you want to be healthy this year, the only thing standing between you being healthy and you not being healthy is you. If you want to increase your financial stewardship this year and your savings account and your debt reduction, the only thing standing between that happening is you. If you want to make a decision this year to, to move some goals forward, let me tell you something. You want to write a book. You want to move forward. You can do it. The only thing standing in your way is you. And I'm not telling you that just because you move forward, every day will be easy. And I'm not telling you that just because you move forward into possibility, it means that everything will be idealistic. And I'm not saying to you that just because you move forward into possibility, that all the things that you're moving towards are going to move towards you in the pace and timeline that you would prefer. But what I am telling you is you don't have to look up at the end of this year and end up right where you were last year. You can make a decision to see possibility in your life. I want you to write this down. You should own a space in the land of possibility, but you should lease a space in the land of reality. Hear me. You should own a space in the land of possibility. You should lease a space in the land of reality. Now, just because this sermon is all about possibility doesn't mean you shouldn't wrestle with some realities. Just because you're going to own space and possibility doesn't mean you don't need to look at stewardship in your financial picture. Just because you're going to own space in the land of possibility doesn't mean you don't need, as Proverbs talks about, wise counsel around you. And I'm about to get to a scripture in a second that's going to bring this into picture for us. Maybe you're saying, Vernon, this has been good so far, but where is the word of God in all of this? I'm telling you, God is about to show us a direction that all of us can head in as believers, as Christians, as followers. And I believe that at the core of our lives, here's what most people ask. When we start talking about possibility, here's what most people ask. What do you think is possible for you in the new year? I mean, at the heart of pretty much all New Year's resolutions is this question. What do I think is possible for me? What do you think is possible for you? I think that's a good question. No judgment to that question. I do think there's a better question. Maybe even a higher question. And that question is this. What does God think is possible for you in the new year? What does God think is possible for you in the new year? This is a huge question. What do we need to wrestle with? Because for some of us, our picture of our future is too small for God. I'm going to say it again because I just got somebody excited. I know something leaped in your spirit. You've had a picture of your future that's been too small for God to work with. You've had a picture of your life that God couldn't do much with. You've had a picture of your life that's been sitting on the mantle of your heart and your expectations and your thoughts. And God said, I can't work beyond the frame that you've given me. But I came to let somebody know today I'm declaring over your heart. I'm declaring expectation into you that if you ever expanded your picture, if you ever expanded your faith, if you ever leaned into the expectation equation, God will show you my possibilities for you are greater than what you ever imagined. There's some possibility that you've been leaving on the hook. There's some possibility that you've been leaving by the wayside. You've only been picking up a part of the possibility that God has for you. And in 2022, I want you to say no more. That I'm going to change my question, not what I can do for me. Not, not, not just what the possibility is for me in the new year. What do I think is possible? I want to align my thoughts to what God thinks is possible. What does God think is possible? This is why scripture tells us, it says, my ways are not his ways. My thoughts are not his thoughts. God wants to expand the way you think so he can expand the way you live. There's possibility in front of you. But today, for the remainder of our time, I want to try to answer this question for you. I I want to do my best to try to help you see what God thinks is possible for all of us. Now, now hear me very clearly today. I'm going to challenge you at the end of this sermon to answer this question more specifically because as I mentioned earlier, there are some specific destinations that God wants to take you to that I can't articulate, that, that all of us aren't going to the same place and called to do the same things. So you have to do that for yourself. That is work that you should be challenged to do about where is God taking you personally. But there is a place that God takes all believers corporately, and I believe God answers that question about what he thinks is possible for us in the new year. And in this time of year, it's very tempting 
to become very superficial in possibility conversations. So, so God wants to take me here so he can give me a new car. And God wants to take me here so he can give me new clothes. And God wants to take me here so he can give me a new network. And God wants to take me here so he can give me new resources. And maybe some of that is true. But for all of us, there's a place that God wants to take us. There's a possibility. Watch this. That's not just happening around you, but happening in you. That God wants to bring into a proper picture. I want you to see this. There's some words that maybe you are familiar with, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Seven people don't log off. Here it is. Are you ready? You ready? I'm going to lean in on this. Hear me. Please hear me. Please hear me. Hear me. Please hear me. Are you ready? Okay. On the behalf of all the people who know you, on the behalf of all the people who know you, I'm going to ask this question. There's some people who want to ask you, can you get better at some of these things? <laughs> don't nobody make no sudden movements. Maybe you're watching with somebody, and you're like, mm-mm, not me. I, I, I've, been, I've been wanting to tell you. But I didn't want to ask. But since Vernon asked, Vernon's going to ask for all the people on the behalf of know you, all the people connected to you. They want to know, can you get better at some of these things? Can, can, I know you're trying to achieve goals. I know that you're going to increase your followers. I know that you're going to grow your bank account. I know that you're going to make some things possible in the earth. All that's great. But, but, but on the behalf of all those people who know you, who don't feel comfortable asking you, they just want to tell you at the beginning of this year, can you get better at kindness? Can, can you get better at peace? Can you get better at patience? Can, can you get better at self-control? Here's what I love about Scripture. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says these are the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here it is. Against such things, there is no law. In other words, God believes all of these are possible for you through relationship with him. Don't miss it. God believes that it is possible for you to have a year full of peace. I can't tell you what the pandemic is going to do in 2022. I, I can't tell you that CNN and Fox and MSNBC, I can't tell you there won't be another variant. I can't tell you, I can't tell you any of that. God didn't reveal that to me. He didn't tell me that in my devotion. He didn't tell me that during the fast at the end of the year. And what I can tell you is God can give you peace. I, I can't tell you that education and the academic system is going to figure everything out and there's going to be virtual and nobody's ever going to get sent home again. I wish I could tell you that. I wish I, wish I could tell you that. I can't. You know what I can tell you, though? I can tell you that God can give you patience. When you open up that laptop to do virtual learning and you're trying to do your work at the same time and you're trying to navigate all the demanding priorities and the competing priorities in front of you, I believe that God can give you more patience. I believe it is a possibility in your life that God can give you more self-control. That there are some things over the last years that maybe have had control over you. And God says, what I want for 2022 is for you to walk in a greater level of control over the things that used to control you. I'm trying to help somebody understand today that there's some possibilities that can show up in all of our lives. And maybe all of us won't have the same success at the end of the year based on how some people define it. Maybe some of us won't have all the same accolades and accomplishments at the end of the year. Maybe some of us won't have all the same followers at the end of the year. Maybe some of us will experience some year with some difficulty and some loss, but no matter who you are, what you have possibility for is love and joy and patience and peace and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. When you have a relationship with God, these are all possible for you. These are the fruits of the Spirit. Now hear me loud and clear. Sounds good to desire these things in your life. 
But make no mistake about it. If you know anything about fruit, if you know anything about the garden process, faithfulness precedes fruitfulness. Faithfulness precedes fruitfulness. And so, yes, there is possibility for each one of these, but that possibility is only going to be the result of how faithful you are to the process to produce these possibilities in your life. I want you to think about this with me for a second as I tell you a story. I was talking to a leader not too long ago, and I was having a conversation with him asking him what some of his goals were for the new year. He pointed me to Galatians 5. He said, hey, this is something I've been wrestling with, something I've been thinking about for me and my family, and it just resonated with me. He said, uh, as I began to think about Galatians 5, I recognized that I was trying to produce all these at once. And then I just stopped and thought about it. He said, what if I focused on one for an entire year? And so this particular individual said, hey, well, I focused on love for a year, and people in my life saw a significant transformation in the way that I expressed love to the people around me. And he said, this year, I'm focusing on peace. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what people are going to say. I don't know what people are going to do, but I'm just committed to protecting my peace at all costs this year. Now, this particular person, they did it for a year. They picked one for the year. Maybe you want to take one for the quarter and then pick another one the next quarter and the next quarter. But I want to challenge you, which one should you be focused on this year? Which fruit should you pursue possibility for in your life? Which one? Maybe God wants you to spend enough time with him at the start of this year to just say, which one or which few am I calling you to focus on? Because while all of our personal possibilities may be different, these are always a possibility in our life. Which one? May God be pointing us to. Now, I want to say this, and I'm not a person who historically gives words for the year. But, but, but I just was praying, and God just dealt with me about three things that have been happening in our society. And I just want to share them with you because I believe they're going to set a trajectory for how we start to focus on these possibilities to show up in our personal life. Now, here's the first one. I believe that 2021 was the year of adaptive, of being adaptive. I believe that 2021 was the year was being adaptive. It was a time where we had to learn how to adapt to new systems and new structures in our society. It was a time where we had to focus on how to adapt to, to new ways to engage with culture. It was a time where we had to learn how to adapt adapt to the new normal. And we've been saying that since 2020. But 2021, I believe, was the year that people said, okay, I, I can't fight this. Nothing's going back to normal. People started to reconcile this truth that it's time to adapt to this is just what it is. And this is the future. And this is the way certain things are going to be. Let me tell you something. I don't know about y'all, but me and my wife been talking. Groceries showing up to the front door may not ever go away. I'm telling you right now, if I got the vote, I'm cool with it. Come on to the grocery. Come on, bring the groceries to the front door. All right. And there's some of us who are like, look, I have adapted to the fact that Amazon is, is, is a godsend and I can get stuff to my home and I don't got to go nowhere. Now, I'm not saying that's everybody. I'm just saying there's a whole lot of people who adapted, who said, this works. If you've been studying the great resignation, which is the term that has been applied to the millions of people who have been leaving jobs in corporate America and other industries because they say, hey, I just decided I'm not going to stress over a job I'm not passionate about. I'm not going to stress in a place that is not uh, feeding my mental and personal health. And so now people are saying, hey, I'm going to pursue my passions. I'm going to pursue my goals. I'm going to finally follow God and pursue that possibility that's been showing up in my life year after year. Okay, that's great. They adapted. It took time for some people. It took time for some people to adapt to these new rhythms, routines of life. I believe 2021 was the year where we had to adapt. I believe that 2022 is going to be a year of two things, agreement and activity. I believe that 2022 is an opportunity for agreement and activity. 
Scripture tells us this. I want you to see this with me. It says that how can two walk together unless they what? Agree. Let's say it together. I want you to put it in the chat. Come on, put it in all caps. How can two walk together unless they what? Agree. I'm going to say it one more time because it's a question for you, and I want you to be convicted by it. How can two walk together unless they what? Agree. Okay, here's the challenge I want to have for you. As you step into this year of possibility, as you step into this year of seeing all that God might want to do in your life, both personally and beyond, who are you in agreement with to bring that into fruition? Who are you in agreement with? Because, yes, there's some things God wants to do with you personally and specific goals he has for you. But when we go back to the fruits of the Spirit, I also want you to ask yourself, are the people I'm walking with helping me to forge this type of fruit in my life, or are they killing this fruit in my life? Are they watering the right seeds, or are they pulling up the seeds that I'm trying to plant? Okay, here it is. Am I walking with people who kill my peace? Or who grow my peace? Am I walking with people who help me be patient or, or encourage my impatience with my future? Am I walking with people who help me to be gentle or are they showing me only how to be aggressive? Am I walking with people who show me how to exercise self-control? Or do I walk with people who constantly encourage me to compromise my standard and my challenge to myself to exercise a greater level of self-control? Some of us have been walking with people who do not agree with the possibility of our future. They agree with the reality of our past. I need you to understand today that this is going to be a year where you have to be cautious and conscious of your agreements. Some of you say you don't agree with certain things, but you walk with people who don't agree with the possibility of your future. So who are you walking in agreement with so that this type of fruit can show up in your life? The question is not, is it possible? I believe that God knows it's possible in your life. The question is, are you walking with people in agreement that can help bring it to pass? Here's the second thing, though. Not only do you have to consider your agreement, you also have to consider your activity. Now, I want to draw a bridge between agreement and activity. Just for a second, last point. I want to draw a bridge between agreement and activity. Uh, 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 my family uh, loves working out together now, and we don't do it as often as we probably should. I don't want to seem like we're being self-righteous, but we do try to get regularly into a workout routine together. Uh, we, a couple times a week, we want the kids to see us working out. And, and really, my wife is a better runner than me, probably because I got one knee, but we'll talk about that another day. Uh, but my wife is a pretty great runner, and, and I had started off running with the kids. Here was the problem. Here was the problem. Uh, I running with the kids with a total knee replacement didn't produce much challenge for them. Matter of fact, most of the time, my kids are ahead of me, and they're waiting for daddy to catch up. That's right. At a young age, my kids will already beat me in a race. It is done deal. I will have to find other ways to beat them, okay? But the reality of it is when we go running, they're ahead of me. So one day, I told my wife, I said, hey, Jackson has been showing a considerable amount of speed and endurance that I think we need to really challenge. We need to stretch. And I said, I think you could stretch him better than I could. So I encouraged my wife. I said, hey, I think you should take Jackson on the run. And she took Jackson on the run. And she said, listen to me. That boy's different, okay? He said, he was waiting for me too. He was pushing my pace. He was getting me to go. They ran a mile. It was like, it was light work for him. It was nothing. I don't even know if the boy broke a sweat. And I began to think about that. <laughs> that we were looking at something in him. And watch this. As long as he was walking with me, as long as he was running with me, the level of agreement wasn't aligned with his potential. And I was actually slowing down, hear me, the possibility of his potential until I had enough wherewithal to say, hey, he needs to run with somebody. He needs to walk with somebody. He needs to be in agreement with somebody who can move at a pace that is aligned with his possibility. Here it is. But the only way sometimes you will know who to walk with differently, who to run with differently, who to maybe break agreement with, and who to add agreement with is you got to be active. Don't miss it. Some of you aren't active enough to see that you got slow people around you. Some of you aren't active enough to see you got lazy people around you. Some of you aren't active enough to see you got people who are just complaining around you. But when you increase your activity, it's going to reveal to you your possibility and how some people are around you that cannot produce the type of fruit 
and possibility that God is trying to bring into your life. But you won't see it until you become active. You won't see it until you start pursuing your possibility and potential. You won't see it until you act on the dream. You won't see it until you move forward. I want to help you understand today that there's possibility attached to you. There's possibility at the start of a new year. And whether you're the dreamer or the realist, everybody has possibility at the start of this year. Possibility to move the needle in your future. Possibility to move the needle in your family. Possibility to move the needle in your marriage. Possibility to move the needle in your career. Possibility to move the needle in your personal aspirations. Possibility to move the needle on your faith journey by increasing your fruit of the Spirit. So don't just ask, what can I do for myself? Yes, that's a question to ask. What can I do for me this year? What can I do this year? That's a question to ask. I'm not saying it's a bad question. But also ask the question, what are the possibilities that God wants to bring into my life this year? And I promise you, it always starts with what God wants to do in you before God starts talking about what he wants to do with you. There's some things that God wants to do in you first. And there's some things God is going to do with you, going to change the world. As we begin to think about this time together, going into this new year, I want to challenge you to ask yourself a few questions. The first one is this. Which fruit will I focus on growing this year? Why? Because I always want you to start with what God wants to do in you before you start focusing on what God wants to do with you. Which fruit? Maybe it's one for you for the whole year. Maybe it's one a quarter. Which fruit will I focus on growing this year? Here's the second question. Because faithfulness precedes fruitfulness, what does weekly faithfulness look like in this area? What does weekly faithfulness look like in this area? If your fruit that God is calling you to grow, right, let's say it's for sake kindness, What does a weekly kind that look like for you? If the fruit that God is calling you to grow is joy, what does curating your own joy look like instead of outsourcing it to the dependency of people's words and acts towards you? How do you curate joy in your own life? What does weekly faithfulness look like in this particular area? And here's the last question I want you to wrestle with. I want you to wrestle with what actions will I take over the first quarter? to assess my agreements. What actions will I take over the first quarter to properly assess my agreements? God is going to stretch some of us to evaluate our agreements this year. It doesn't mean you have to be rude. It doesn't mean you have to have disdain. It doesn't mean you have to be uh, uh, unkind. But you are going to have to make some tough decisions this year about am I walking in agreement with the right people? Are the people I'm walking with bringing the right fruit out of my life? Are the people I'm walking with allowing me to see the possibility that God has attached to my life? But that's only for some of us going to be seen through our activity. For some of you, you're going to start being active and you're going to recognize people who you thought loved you actually envy you. For some of you, you're going to become active and you're going to recognize that the pace you want to run at, people can't keep up with you. For some of you, you're going to recognize that your work ethic is attached to lazy agreements. What activity will I step into over the next 90 days to properly assess my agreements? I want to pray for you. As you step into this year, you ask the question, what does God think is possible for me? And I can tell you right now, while all of our personal answers may be different corporately, God knows what's possible for you is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Let me pray now that God would show us how to see this fruit in our life. I pray now, God, that you might show up loud and clear as we step into this year, that you would show up big and bold in this year, that whether we're the dreamer or the realist, We might not allow pessimism or laziness to prevent us from seeing possibility that you have in front of us. And God, may we never forget that you are the God of both ends. So while there's a lot that you want to do with us 
this year. God, you also want to do something in us this year. Allow us to find great excitement and expectation in both ends. The excitement of knowing that in us, we're going to grow fruitful. And with us, you're going to change the world around us. We thank you, Lord, for the possibility attached to our lives this year. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.